survive for, for many, many days, and you'll be able to, um, you know, uh, uh, having life together. So this is the first thing um, that uh, started the relationship between two individuals, men and women, or, uh, you know, other different uh, type that, you know, I'm not uh, going to talk about it, but, you know, uh, you know, majority of the people are, you know, opposite sex, but it's okay to have the same sex relationship. It's uh, uh, totally accepted. This is the totally normal variation of the, you know, uh, individual development. Okay, so uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Kat uh, from Los Angeles. Uh, hello and uh, welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. How are you today? It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Mitra uh, Khoram Shadi. Good afternoon, from... Dr. K. Good afternoon, Dr. Mitra. Thank you? you. Very nice to meet you too. I'm good. It might be, it might be, is, is it like nine o'clock right now for you? Absolutely right. Exactly. It, it is. I just noticed because here is sunny and beautiful. That it should be dark over there right now. Nice to meet you. And I wanted to also extend my thank to all of you, to you and to all of your staff for doing a wonderful job in New York. And I hope this thing comes to an end soon. All right. I thanks. Hope so. I hope so. So, uh, Dr. Kat, uh, intimate relationship and uh, what's your definition i wish i could i could define it a little bit better i i'm not sure if i have a better definition i just think for me uh, intimate relationship could start with two basic uh way of, of two basic view and of course each one of us have our own lens right we have a different view of what that relationship entails or what it what is supposed to look like so people have a different different way of looking at it but for me in, there, there could be an intimate relationship between two friends, meaning they could share a lot of characteristics of a couple, except sexual relationship or maybe even a, a spiritual relationship to that sense. Uh, so they, for me, when you talk about couples, obviously it, it does include the sexual chemistry. It, it, does include, it does include that attraction and that affection that you have towards an opposite sex or maybe even the same sex. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, it, the sex really does not matter. It's just the attraction and the desire you have towards another person. And, and that attraction could be, it could be defined in so many different ways, but it's mostly about a physical attraction that you have towards another person. But the characteristics of, uh, to me, the characteristics of both is really the same. It just kind of, maybe uh, exclude passion when you're talking about two close, very close friends. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about two intimate couples, obviously it should include, or hopefully it includes passion and desire to, that they want, that they want to be with each other. They want to have that physical connection with each other. Whereas two friends may not really want to have any physical contact with each other. It's just everything else is included. But um, for me, the basic characteristics, is, it's, it's a relationship that is sort of ongoing. It's, um, it's a repeated interaction between two people that makes it more interesting and intimate. It's more of, it has a fundamental base on, based on trust. Um, it's, it's very fulfilling. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, there, is a, there is a sense of belongingness when you're with the other person or when you even think about the other person, right? You have that sense of belongingness. You have that passion, that feeling of love. Um, you feel uh, sort of a little bit of uh, obligation that um, I'm obligated to meet that person needs because that makes me happy. Um, it, it, it's, it, sometimes, like I said, sometimes it does include sex or it doesn't, but that, which makes it maybe a, a partner relationship or just a friendship, very exclusive but close friendship about, but we are talking about the uh, you know a uh, couple you're talking, talking about, about couples. The, yeah yeah definitely right. couples and uh, we are talking about intimate relationship uh in marriage uh, you know and uh, when you uh, mention about trust uh, can trust be rebuilt uh, after is broken if you're asking me that question <laughs> you, wanna ask you should ask the late you should ask the ladies that question <laughs> <laughs> okay, <No. laughs> okay, okay. Uh, it, Dr. Korabshad, if, you it, start if, with, if, it, no, let's go to mm -hmm. New York, let's go to New York, <laughs> please, <laughs> as for yes, uh, Dr. Uh, Koram Shadi. okay, go ahead, please. I believe that the different um, 
you know, actually uh, personality and different perspective. First of all, I have to um, say that, you know, I really liked the point of view that Dr. Kate was explaining about the intimate relationship, partner, um, you know, relationship. And uh, I, I like that very much. This is so, uh, you know, interesting. Every aspect that, you know, he was mentioning was um, completely uh, beautiful and fascinating, actually. But regarding that, you know, are, can you fix it or no? Can you book yeah, it? You know, if, the yeah, we are going with this question again. Uh, because can tr it, this is very important. Most of people, the they don't know how much is important these things and it happened to me that's why i know what's going on <laughs> can trust be rebuilt no seriously can trust be rebuilt after it's broken it's very difficult yes, to be honest I know. with you it's very difficult to rebuild it again and it needs a lot of you know practice it needs a lot of mm -hmm. you know time and it, mm -hmm. it needs a lot of you know effort to mm -hmm. rebuild it again. I believe that, you know, uh, whatever is broken, uh, when you want to rebuild it or fix it, uh, at least you try to make it work. Um, you need more efforts, you need more energy, you need more consideration, and it's not easy. At the beginning, uh, maybe it's a kind of, you know, busy process, but if it is like that, uh, you should consider a little bit more time of energy and consideration. So, and uh, now, Dr. Kat. Um, you're asking a question that is, um, I think, a little bit difficult for me to answer. I hope I'm in, I'm in your camera. <laughs> is that I'm trying, I am trying to make sure I'm in your camera. Um, it, do, you want it is, water? do you want to water something, Dr. K? <laughs> no, I'm good. I think what the question, <laughs> the question you're asking is very difficult to answer if you're experiencing it yourself. So if I want to put myself in the shoes of someone who's actually experiencing the trust issue, it comes back to two fundamental factors for me. One is, did I grow up in my life with trust issues? Or is this um, a trust issue that the is trust the has been side. broken? Yeah, is, if, the, if, it, if it has happened to the other side, is it actually fact or is it my belief? Because mm -hmm. sometimes we think the trust has been broken, but it has not. Let's say it has completely. Yes. Yes. Is it is it is it is it possible to rebuild? I believe yes, it is. But I uh, I think it is extremely difficult because we are putting ourselves. Imagine when you're in a relationship, in a in an intimate relationship like that between two couples. At some point, one of you or both of you may completely remove all the guards you have against everybody else right and you bring all your guards down and then you share everything with the other person you may share information about your childhood you may share information about the first time you had a girlfriend or boyfriend the first time you had a relationship you maybe experienced a kiss or love making with somebody you may go into serious details and share information that you may never share with another soul right you may not have do even shared mean, it with your parents yeah do, do you mean uh when two people are they are super vulnerable and they mm -hmm. don't uh hide anything and uh, all information is available and they'll they give us in they, they give you know all information you do yeah you're talking about that uh, okay and now yes, i want to just again mm -hmm. i want to just go ahead again uh, go back and mm, i want to make sure we are on the same page uh we are talking about uh intimate relationship between couple uh and then trust broken and you said it's difficult but it's possible uh so it's difficult for uh normal person i know it's I, difficult I, it's difficult when other side has a trust issue right that's what totally I'm, difficult but right. what, what about the, if it's two people is it normal what i'm talking about first of all it it has to do with what was the subject that the trust was broken on right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's say the trust was i told you to call me at seven o'clock and you didn't then five times later, uh, you were supposed to call me at seven o'clock and you didn't. Mm -hmm. So now I have a trust issue with you, right? 
that is a much easier trust issue to fix rather than you broke my trust and you just slept with my friend right let's look at this in a broader picture in a bigger picture is mm -hmm. that which one is easier to resolve to, or mm -hmm. to correct or which one is easier to handle without suffering serious emotional pain mm -hmm. when we when i talk about lowering our guards we are sharing information and feelings with someone we are creating a bond between me and that person we're creating a bond between ourselves that mm -hmm. bond depending on how much damage has been caused could be seriously damaged so the damage could be you were supposed to pick me up at my office at five o'clock and take me to dinner you didn't call you didn't show up that and, may be and something this that you happened, could work this out this thing and, happened 10 times to 20 times 40 right. times six months you know obviously you have that may be others. that may be a much yeah, that may be a much easier subject mm -hmm. or issue to resolve and, uh, and of course I, i'm not saying that it, it is easy for everybody for some people that could be enough to say you know what no you don't care about me there because then it comes to how do i view you not caring and not being there if i view it as lack of respect lack of care lack of love lack of attention to me i may say well you don't care about me so maybe you just pick me up when you want me to because of your own needs. It's not just about us. It's not, it's about you. But then it comes to you had a relationship with somebody else or you may have even uh, broken my trust and had the infidelity is what I'm calling it. Uh, and you had a relationship with somebody else, even though it could have been just one time, it could have been maybe 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. That level of trust could be a serious damage. It's like an earthquake of 4.0 versus 6.0. Which one is easier to rebuild? 4.0 is far easier to, really, six, to, to six resolve, point right? 6.5. It's going to be a lot. So it depends on, oh, I, 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 I have to agree uh, that it depends on the personality of the person. Exactly. I, uh, I, I'm going to approve with the, uh, uh, agree with Dr. Fram Shadi because this, is, this has to do with you and how resilient you are, how open you are, how important this relationship is to you. How much value you have for the other person's world? How much can you trust a person in your life in general? How did you grow up with trust issues? Do you have, did you grow up generally having an issue? I have a client right now, she tells me, I have always had a trust issue with men. This mm -hmm. goes back to her childhood. She had mm -hmm. issues trusting her brother. She, mm -hmm. has, she had issues trusting her own father. Mm -hmm. So for a person like that, it would be obviously a lot harder to develop a trusting issue with a man and go forward. Now imagine if somebody damages that trust, that bond that she has already created, spent God knows how many hours and how much time right. to build, and then it has been broken. So it's easier said than done, I think. I hope uh, I hope I, have, I was a little clear. Dr. Uh, Koram Shadi, what do you want to add to this part? I totally agree with Kate. Uh, he explained it very uh, precise, very uh, deep, and um, it's very fascinating. I agree with him, and I want to add that you know, basically, our trust built up during their infancy with the primary caregiver. How is our relationship? How, how is our attachment to the primary caregiver? How we will, you know our surrounding world um, do we feel it that this is the secure world for us or this is the insecure world so it depends on the you know uh, basic uh, fundamental uh, development that we go through it we will you know um, have the different type of the behavior with the intimate relationship with our partner so um, I agree with him this is this is very serious matter it depends on you know the um, uh, degree of the uh, you know vulnerability towards the trust and the mistrust and what does it mean to be uh, interdependent are you going to go with that dr kate or should i you know <laughs> please go ahead <laughs> all right i'm, so, I'm here uh, to i'm here to learn please Oh no! <laughs> I think the only person is here for learn is me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all learning from each. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Right. Uh, but actually, I believe that you know we are influence each other. We are getting a little bit of interaction from our 
behavior uh, towards the other person and getting the influence from the other person towards us. This is the mutual connection. This is the mut mutual relationship. It's not going to happen that you just uh, influence the other people and, you know, nothing uh, received by you. Uh, it, it's not going to happen. But the degree of or level of the uh, receiving, interacting, interchanging, all these different depends on the you know uh, personality and different 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 from the different culture. Um, I believe that you know we were talking about um, the right side of the hemisphere and left side of the hemisphere, and we we know that you know the totally different type of the uh, personality we can come up with the uh, dominancy of each hemisphere. If it is the left type of the hemisphere dominance. We are dealing with a logical person. We are dealing with a person that, you know, acting um, like an executive functioning in an office. Uh, he likes to calculate it. He, he makes the logic. He makes the, you know, uh, uh, problem solving. So uh, and trying to make a relationship with this person, it's totally different from the uh, other person that comes from the right hemisphere dominancy. Uh, which is uh, uh, related to our uh, social behavior, uh, related to our emotional behavior, it, it related to our nonverbal clues. So it depends on, you know, which uh, hemisphere of your brain is uh, dominant and what type of person is in front of you and what type of, you know, interaction you are giving to that person and receiving from that person. So uh, there's a lot of, you know, a parameter and, uh, you know, characteristic that um, needs to consider. And Dr. Kat. Um, if I if I want to say if I want to say something about interdependency, I have to say, in, in my view, I have to very briefly say what is dependency. You know, in the basic structure of a relationship, let's say two people are together for a long haul. They want to stay together forever. Um, there is a love. There is love, passion, and then at some point, there, something is missing. There, maybe there is love, but there is no passion. And then the relationship might, all this interdependency sort of relationship could end into a relationship of convenience. Mm -hmm. I'm here because if I leave you, my kids are going to get hurt. If I leave you, That's I'm going to lose money. Huh? I'm not going to be able, yeah, I'm not going to be able to live on my own. Mm -hmm. So this is more of now a relationship of dependency mm -hmm. rather than interdependency. We are dependent on each other or I'm dependent on you and you are dependent on me because of the kids, because of money, because of a lot of other reasons. What I call interdependency is when you are doing pretty okay on your own. You can function, manage your life. You're resilient enough to take care of everything on your own. But certainly there is a level of passion and chemistry that you have um, in yourself just like any other human being that you would love to share that with someone else because it's pleasing it's it's wonderful it, it brings fulfillment into your life that fulfillment that love and passion is interdependent it becomes dependent is it, 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 it's defined as dependency when that is not there and you fall apart like totally lose your life like you do not know you can't even go to work anymore you can't get up so interdependency to me is two individuals doing pretty good functioning, pretty good in almost all aspects of their life. It's pretty balanced. They come together, they have a relationship together, and that relationship adds to their growth, right? Mm -hmm. We always like in our life to grow we, because if there is no growth, if, there is, if you're in a life of a stagnation, in a relationship, in a stagnated relationship, we don't feel fulfilled. We don't feel the growth. We don't feel the love anymore. We lose passion. We lose all of it. We have to grow together. At, so, and each individual have to work on themselves to make sure independently they can grow. And then when they're in a relationship with somebody else, that relationship becomes even better. That's just my definition of it. And you mentioned about independence. And uh, uh, what does it mean codependency? And how much is uh, not healthy? codependency are you asking me uh you start with you this time why not um codependency i think it's a, a little bit easier for me to define because i can definitely say at every aspect of our life of our life each one of us 
we are codependent on something else or someone else whether that's a relationship at work whether that's a relationship we have with an individual whether that's a relationship we have with a friend with our family members in my opinion and this is only my lens looking at this there is always a level of codependency because i depend on you to act in a certain way i depend on you to show up in a certain way i depend on you to do certain things for yourself even in a certain way not wait for me to take care of all of that stuff for you so codependency co is like it's more of give and take i did this for you i'm expecting in return not for you to necessarily to do something for me but to at least understand why i did that for you is so it good it, for relationship it, 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 codependency mm -hmm. i don't see any problem with it it depends I, I have to say it depends exactly on what is that codependency and what does it entail because not everything could be sometimes the codependency is just being warm with each other you know having having a private conversation i depend mm -hmm. on you in a code in sort of like that you're not going to go say share my information that i shared with you with someone else mm -hmm. right we're, we're, this, there is a there is a level of trust in codependency. I'm depending on you not to go share that information with someone else and keep it private. Okay. So if if obviously that doesn't exist, then I don't know why that relationship would have any kind of dependency at all. Okay, you and Doctor Doctor uh, Horam Shoti, you. I agree with Doctor Kate. Actually, he explained it very well. Um, but uh, for added up, I believe that you know. Uh, uh, codependency is um, uh, between two individuals in a you know functional level with the uh, being in a state of mind that they are able to take care of themselves is totally acceptable and it's going to happen every single day in our daily basis uh, intimate relationship with each other even though in the you know daily works in, in our family uh, or even though in the you know bigger societies but if the uh, two individuals are different in the level of the functioning and the level of the uh, state of mind that they are such as you know one um, is a, a addicted person the other one is the you know spouse of this uh, addiction uh, person is totally uh, different and it's not going to be functional it's not going to be meaningful it's not going to cause any type of the growth and you know pleasure and there is no a way uh, to continue this type of, you know, codependency for a long period of time. In this type of the relationship, finally, the codependent uh, to this uh, type of behavior, finally, it's uh, broken. And sometimes they usually terminate at the level of the, um, you know, uh, intimate relationship. So uh, it depends on, you know, these two uh, individuals and uh, it depends on uh, these, uh, you know, state of mind and functionality of these people. Uh, it would be in different, uh, uh, you know, uh, level of, uh, and meaning. So if you want to, uh, you already mentioned about the couple keys and secret keys to make a, uh, intimate relationships like, uh, uh, trust, like, uh, growth. Uh, so if you want to say five to 10, feel free just keys we have this time i'm going to start with dr uh koram shadi go ahead please the key for a good relationship healthy relationship is that you feel good we want to talk about sorry uh, about healthy relationship and unhealthy relationship we're going to talk uh, next tuesday in your program at four but now we want to talk about keys and secrets of have a uh, intimate relationship okay the first intimate relationship keys is your chemistry. chemistry how much you do have the affection yes it's very important you have to have the chemistry you have to have the affection you have to have the interest toward the other person you have to have the eagerness okay. to chemistry. see that person have it next yes. please it's the most important thing element and then you have to be able to communicate with that person. Mm -hmm. You have something in the common to talk about it. And then, um, you know, something as a goal or uh, your target in your life that you, you both can follow it up 
and get the result, you know, in, in future. As, as Dr. Kate mentioned it, that, you know, growth is very important. If there is no growth in the life, there is no, uh, you know, um, need to continue that type of the relationship. I believe that, you know, these are very uh, basic elements for any type of the relationship that we have to... Uh, Give us five know. keys, please. Uh, you already mentioned it. This is, you know... Okay, just say one trust. more, one, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, the other one is the trust. The other one trust. is that, yes, and, and care. Commitment, caring, you know, caring, we have, caring. Yeah, care. Uh, how much do I care about you? How much do I, you know, uh, see you, notice you, and, you know, try to... Uh, you know, um, encourage you to um, uh, uh, cover up your, uh, or, uh, you know, um, diminish your vulnerability, uh, grow up, and then, you know, uh, how much uh, I, I, I could be able um, to bring up the positive conclusion to your life, you know, um, okay. it's how much, you know, positive outcome I can bring it up. You already mentioned five things. Uh, okay. <laughs> chemistry, trust, uh, caring, co co commitment, and growth. I know, uh, Dr. Kate, your part is harder because we already mentioned five things. And now, five. Uh, you know, uh, th truthfully, I don't know if there is, mine is going to be so much different than the other one, but uh, uh, than what was just m mentioned. But um, for me, I think it comes also to a level of security. Every single one of us, when we're in a relationship of any kind, whether you're at work or in an intimate relationship or friendship, you do want to have a certain level of security. Nice. Human beings without security fall apart. They cannot manage and function. It's going to be much harder for them to manage to to manage their life. So mm -hmm. I would definitely say one of the one of the key factors in a relationship would be security. security. And if I want to add one more, I want to say contribution because if both people are not contributing to a relationship in some some form or another one person is usually dragging the other person right so if one person Giving, is always yeah. dragging the other person at some at some point their fire is going to go out it doesn't matter how good looking you are it doesn't matter how beautiful you are you could be mary moreau but right. at some point if i have to drag you all day to everything and to and and sort of feed you and take care of you and do all of that for you at some point i'm going to fall apart and i'm going to give up so i would definitely say uh, and then I, I think we already talked about fulfill, fulfillment, but right. um, it, I want to also mention to me, it's very important because I, I want to be honest with you. I have dated a few people myself that I saw s uh, a lack of confidence. The confidence was not there at all. And it, I don't know, somehow my passion, all my feelings died because mm -hmm. you have to somehow have some level of self-confidence in yourself mm -hmm. because... You want to attract the other person, right? Mm -hmm. How many people get attracted to another person when they see no confidence at any level? So I, I want to say that is a, that's a key factor. And then you have to also be not just communicator, not a good communicator, but I think in a really like that, you have to be a very good listener. Good listener. You, I, I think that's a key factor because if you're in an intimate relationship with each other and you're talking to me for an hour and I'm only, I'm only um, thinking about what you're saying to respond to you rather than hear you, then at some point you're going to be like, is this about you or is this about me or is it about us? Yeah, so sharing, if you're information, listening to, yeah, sharing right, information is very important. Majority of us, including myself, we listen, and I admit, I listen to respond. And sometimes I tell myself, I have to remind myself, this is not about me listening to respond, this is about me hearing someone else. When you're in an intimate relationship, I think that should go into a much higher level or degree because you're here for, this, for the security of the other person. They have to feel that they're in a loving relationship with you. Just like was mentioned earlier, in, in a more of a spiritual relationship with you. In that kind of an environment or that kind of a relationship, one person should be a, a good listener. You're never going to be perfect. None of us are. I'm definitely not one of those. But you have to try and see, see if you can make yourself, because that's how you create a bond. The other mm -hmm. person trusts exactly. you when they know you're actually listening to them rather mm -hmm. than you're just hearing them. 
So I don't know if I beautiful. said five, but that's uh, yeah. That's, that's but what uh, comes you to mentioned mind. about something very good. Uh, it was a uh, giving and receiving. Uh, is called like, you know we call it uh, mutual responsible. Uh, we have to be mutual. Yeah, we have to uh, have this one and also uh, acceptation. Accept anyone, any you know. Don't try for change. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a very big thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If you, if, yeah, if you, acceptation if you ask is very good. And, me. and don't <laughs> compare. And and also another thing I want to add, don't compare. <laughs> but do you know uh, if you ask me, we're always going to compare. <laughs> no, 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 I'm asking you guys because you know I want to make sure that you know. Do you know how many percent of the women are comparing, and you know they ask for um, you know uh, differences. So no that's why they, they cannot might. build. That's why they cannot build an intimate relationship. <laughs> no, but but the, but the tr but the truth is, Mr. Amir. But the truth is, if I want to speak, uh, if, forget about being a therapist or a psychologist or whatever, as a person, as a man, right? Mm -hmm. I do compare. There is no way you can tell me I don't compare to two women's hair or the way they look, the way they speak, the way they talk, the way they carry themselves, the way they clean themselves. So, I mean, I know it's funny, but I compare all the time. We may not, we may not put so much value on our comparison, right? Because one thing could make us so passionate about a person that we will forget about everything else. It has happened to me zillions of times. Well, not zillion. I shouldn't say that. Uh, no, a few doctor, times. I, I, but, I, wrote, no. <laughs> I just, I just read it from book. It's inside of book. No. It's not in reality. But you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 the, but, the, but the truth in reality is if we can lie to ourselves, in my opinion, we can lie to ourselves and say we don't compare, but we do. There mm -hmm. is no way one person doesn't sit in front of me and then I have a, pre a, a, a notion in my head of what a, an ideal, per each one of us, I want to make it brief because I know you don't have time. Each one of us has an, has an ideal person in our head. We have an ideal woman, an ideal man, now that mm -hmm. could be in, not in just the looks, it could be in the way they speak. It could be in a lot of other characteristics that we, for us may become, may look like the ultimate or maybe like, like someone who, who looks at a man and says, I want him to be my hero. What does that hero mean to a woman, right? Mm -hmm. A hero could be maybe the one who takes care of all of her needs, make sure that she's not, she doesn't have any issues. A hero to her could be a person that represents her dad, right? someone who has always been behind her and loved her and kissed her and everything you know, doesn't matter what she did always said positive things about her was very motivating all the time so it could be that so we do we compare yes i compare all the time i i'm not gonna lie about it i always compare is that comparison sometimes that comparison keeps me from doing certain things and sometimes it actually motivates me because i may compare and say well you know, if you're open-minded, you say, well, this one has its own type of beauty as well. It, two apples and oranges do not have to be the same. They're both different fruits. They're both wonderful. Both of them. We just mm -hmm. have to be open to see and experience a different version of good or beautiful. There, there is always beauty in everything. That's just my view. Um, For comp, okay. It's okay. It's fair. It's fair enough. I like that point of view, Dr. K. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't want to lie about it. I wanted to be honest because okay. some people come and say, oh, I never compare. I'm never, I'm like, yeah, please don't tell me that you don't, you, you do compare. And then I give them a form of comparison. They're like, well, I don't compare to that one, but we do compare. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. True. And now, uh, intimate relationship in 30 seconds, Dr. Koram Shadi. Intimate relationship is started with uh, physical attraction, affection, good communication, trust, and uh, build up during the time. Basically, needs a lot of effort and energy. And at the end, you have to feel good and you have to grow up and then grow at the end. Okay, and Dr. Kat. You're asking hard questions. I, I'm not, I'm not like, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shadi, I'm not that smart. I can't say it in 30 seconds. So I, I'm going to okay, just say you have time. Don't worry about that. Don't worry. You have time. One minute. Go ahead. <laughs> to, to me, to me, an intimate relationship is when two people are close, 
they can mm -hmm. share information or they can share their passion, their love. They can share their body with each other mm -hmm. uh, without without feeling guilt, without feeling uncomfortable, without being ashamed of themselves. Because we do have in our culture a lot of shame about physical attraction or sex drive or sexuality. We have a lot of problem with that stuff, right? And mm -hmm. I think the ultimate to me would be that. It starts from there. Like there is, there is a threshold for every human being. And when you're in an intimate sexual relationship, you can pass that threshold and not feel vulnerable or, be, or scared. Not feel like you're gonna be let down or put down or dismissed, right? So to me, you can put, put your guards down and, mm -hmm. and know that if you fall, the other person is gonna catch you without judging you so fast. They put you back in their heart and they take care of you the way you want to be taken care of, like the infant that Dr. Haram Shadi referred to. And I, I know that's a little bit more uh, of a... It was amazing. It was very... It, you complete each other. Very good. Very good. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was amazing. And I hope to you know talk to you, both of you again very soon. Okay? Dr. Dr. Haram Shadi, nice to meet you. Meet you. That was a great it pleasure was my to pleasure. meet you. I really enjoyed. I liked your point of view, and you know that was Thank a fascinating you. talk. Thank you. I love yours as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, much. Mr. Ami. Have a good evening. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Stay tuned with us. We have more music and dance competition is coming. Yes, we're going to dance.